around the same time that the Red Road Flats were built, which I already covered in the first episode of Glasgow History, another project started for two tower blocks in the Gallowgate that would be both 30 storeys tall, taller than two of the Red Road Flats. It was the mid-60s and Glasgow was quickly becoming the UK's tower block capital, with more towers being thrown up here than in any other city in the country. It was the midst of the post-war housing crisis, they tore down the slum tenements and began putting up the luxurious high-rises. Just a year after people began moving into Red Road, in 1967, they started construction of 109 Blueville Street and 51 Whiteville Street, also known as the Gallagate Twins. When the buildings were complete in 1968, people began to move in. The flats were a huge improvement over the slum tenements of the day, with many not have basic amenities like a toilet, shower and heating. But these blocks had it all. Bathrooms, decent living space, heating and balconies that could see all across the city. Many initially enjoyed the flats, but by the 70s, problems started to arise. They had sort of a similar architectural design as the Barbican estate, but they were nowhere near as luxurious. They did have a unique architectural feature. Hydraulic jacks and their foundations reduced the swaying of the buildings and the wind. Unlike Red Road, which was in large part made into a bad place to live by some of the residents and the vandals there, the Gallagate twins were tarnished by their cheap and poor design in an attempt to build the flats as quickly and cheaply as possible, and in the most extreme cases, builders were paid to cut corners and focus on speed, not quality. As a result of the dilapidation of the buildings caused by their poor design, they became a breeding ground for crime and vandalism. Many of the problems that plagued Red Road would also plague the Gallagate twins, and the buildings would begin to look more and more like an eyesore as the years went on. The flats became a hotspot for drug dealers and thieves. In some cases, people would steal letterboxes for scrap metal. By 2011, the writing was on the wall. Glasgow Housing Association planned the demolition of the flats. At first, they planned for an explosive demolition, but they found it too disruptive for the community nearby and decided to use a unique floor-by-floor -floor demolition tactic, taking away the flats one level at a time until there was only about five storeys left. So in early 2016, they began demolition on the Blueville Tower. This, weirdly enough, was the same time that they became the tallest buildings in Glasgow. The Red Road flats were gone, but the Gallagher Twins weren't, so oddly, during their demolition, they were taller than any other building in Glasgow. As the Blueville Tower disappeared, they removed all the equipment from the building, leaving four or five storeys at the bottom, which could be turned into new flats, of course after heavy renovation, but instead they got the excavators to pull down the remainder and began working on the Whiteville Tower, the lone tallest building in Glasgow since the Blueville Tower was gone. By mid-2016, the Whiteville Tower was almost completely gone, and as they finished removing the last five floors at the bottom of both towers, the skyline had changed forever. After clearing the site, they built new apartments on it, which they could have turned the bottom of the towers into, but now if you look up from the Ford shopping centre to where the apartments are, you can still picture the flats in the sky. After the demolition, the new tallest buildings in Glasgow were the blocks that stood behind Red Road, the Edgefold Road flats, which will be here for plenty more years to come.